All right, aloha my kako. Welcome everybody to the beautiful Waikiki Beach Walk Plaza. Uh, welcome to the island of O'ahu in the sitting county of Honolulu. Welcome to our south end or corner end of the island as you sit back, relax, and just ho'onanea and enjoy this beautiful afternoon. You're going to be listening to Kiho Alu as we connect with that wonderful man who really made Kiho Alu famous around the world. As we pre present you, George Kuo and his band. Please announce round of applause, everybody. Aaron Mahi, Greg Sardina, and George Kuo. Aloha.
was an old chant of King David Kalakau's favorite surfing spot, turned into modern music with uh, today, and we added with uh, Kihualu Hawaiian steel guitar as well. So we're very, we're very fortunate that um, we have over here Greg, one of Hawaii's most renowned steel guitarists, as well. And you know, he's, we we're all baby boomers. Thanks. We're that Hawaiian Renaissance age. Uh, uh, going, you know, we had a lot of great mentors with us, and they're all in the Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame that you would like to bring attention to. We're all inductees, board members of our Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame, and, and you know, that's a wonderful legacy that we're perpetuating. We like to highlight a lot of uh, music of those Hawaiian Music Hall of Famers. So we just highlighted the Nalani Eha, uh, King David Kalakaua, Princess Miriam Like Like, uh, Lele Prince Lele Hoku and Queen Liliu Kalani. So starting off with that era, then we'll move into the more uh, modern composers after that. So here's Aaron going to do a song, Koni Ao Ikavai. And by the way, Aaron was inducted into the Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame with the whole Royal Hawaiian Band back in 1995. <laughs> 1895. <laughs> 1895. <laughs> okay, keep that. Koni Ao. Kori Oiko Vai Hui Hui is sung written by our King Kalakaua. It uh, speaks about the North Shore area, a place called Waialua. You might know of Haleiwa, the North Shore area. And he also liked to, always liked to go out there and just relax with his good friends, just to get away from the uh, stress of the kingdom during his time as his rule. And so this is called the uh, Sipping of those Cool Waters. Oh, he he
our Royal Hawaiian Band conductor uh, from the uh, year, let's see, 2000 and... 1895. Uh, no, no, you're not that old, Aaron. You're, <laughs> you're just like us. You're the same age as us. <laughs> I'm not but he was, I see, two, 2001. He was, um, I started with the city and county border water supply in 2000, and he started with the city and county Royal Hawaiian Band, and... Boy, we 19, 1981. got even closer. 1981. <laughs> 1981. <laughs> okay. I'm getting my years out. See, when you get old, <laughs> when you get past 60. Anyhow, so here's a song of Prince Lele Hoku and uh, Wafting Breeze, Moani Ke Ala. Scented breeze. Prince Lady Yohoku. Oh, one more song from the Nalani Eha period. This song is for King David Kalakawa and uh, written by his beloved wife, Queen Kapi'olani. Sadly, he didn't get to hear this song as Kalakawa passed away at the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. Anybody from the Bay Area? San Francisco? I know we always have. People over here, that's... Our, Number know, five over there, California. <laughs> okay, <laughs> south of Market is the Palace Hotel. Number five. But he, I, he passed away on the fourth floor of the Palace Hotel. You can still feel his spirits over there, even though the hotel has been renovated and they charge $50 an hour for parking, but it's okay. <laughs> that was an experience going to the Palace Hotel still. And um, when his body came back to uh, Honolulu, they had a big funeral procession down King Street. And this song was played, and people thought it was a funeral song, but it's actually a very precious love song of that how deep and revered, uh, revered how the lay of bird feathers uh, are to the Hawaiian culture. Ka'ipo le manu.
Himanu tu o da mai kanale. Take it away, brother Gray. What a beautiful song that Kapiolani wrote. Now I'll take you into a more modern era. Sonny Kunha was inducted. He was a big band leader along with Johnny Noble. They uh, collaborated with many hop holly tunes, the modern era where they got the old Hawaiian music that we took and put it to English words and, and also the a modern uh, big band structure that they would have. And, or put in all these crazy cordings and also some wild sings. They would say, Yakahula hiki do. <laughs> and mostly uh, writing songs of romance of that era of seeing hula maidens on the beach, swishing and swaying, playing their ukuleles and the beach boys. And so they knew how to have a good time in those days and enamored with making new music and that beautiful romance era. Here's that song of the hula blues. You can say, how can you do the hula and have blues too? <laughs> so he wrote the music to get the blues feeling and the hula, singing of the hula dances. But one of our legends also of music, uh, Pua Almeida, he 
uh, put in his own words also to uh, enjoy the feeling of okole hao. Everybody knows, anybody know what that is? It's a, it's a distilled tea root. It looks like gin, better, but it's better than whiskey, better than gin, better than wine. And that was a drink of the choice in those days of prohibition when they would uh, be distilling the tea root when they couldn't get American liquor. But, you know, that Hawaiian tea root, that was the best thing around, the okole hao. So here we go singing a verse of that as well. The Hula Blues. beautiful steel guitar of Greg Sardinia. Yeah, we're going to feature more of that steel guitar going back to the, staying in that big band era. One of the great uh, big band directors of Hawaiian music, Uncle Alvin Isaacs. Uh, the Isaacs family, also his sons just got inducted, Barney, Norman, and Atta. You know, Barney with the famous steel guitarist that we all played with. 
and got to be good friends with. And in fact, Greg was, got introduced to the steel guitar. Well, he got influenced into the steel guitar with Barney's son, um, Trip, the third. Alvin the third. Alvin the third, and Greg gave up his rock and roll to play. Not gave it up, but he. I gave up my four o'clock in the morning job. <laughs> he gave up your rock and roll job to go play Hawaiian music and steel yeah, guitar. Yeah, you could be home by 10. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Barney, and, uh, and of course, um, Aaron over here got very close with Barney as well and all his songs. So we're going to do a couple of those songs. How about um, Ho Mali Mali, Brother Greg playing that, you know, giving them, uh, you know, just, it's such a hard instrument to play. It's really, uh, words cannot express how. Not really. How wonderful it is that you're carrying on this steel guitar because a lot of guys are going to give up. They play a few notes and they say, oh, too hot. <laughs> <laughs> so terrific, Greg. Thank you for carrying it on. Remember now, I have to give up something for this. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't come that easy. <laughs> anyway, Ho'o Mali Mali, Alvin Isaacs. Alani, yeah? Yeah. Can you imagine the great Nat King oh, Cole? Yeah. That's the ultimate flattery to, uh, to uh, do one of your songs of uh, Nalani. And so there's another song in that same vein, uh, Aloha Nui Ku'u Ipo. the sea I lay a kiss 
voice of happy greeting a lover's melody Kool-Aid is heaven dancing near the ocean beneath the moon and stars It's putting us in the romance mood, Brother Aaron. Yeah. Uncle Alvin's beautiful song, Aloha Nui. Uncle Alvin uh, played uh, at the opening of the Royal Hawaiian Hotel uh, back in 26, 27. And uh, he had a wonderful trio there and wrote a lot of these songs to just kind of, you know, lure all the, all the uh, visitors that were coming here. And that's why many times uh, people like Bing Crosby and... Uh, Charlie Wisemiller and also that King Cole would be down there and he'd share his music and they ended up many of them recording his songs. Uncle Alvin and Khalil Lani Isaacs. Okay, we're going to get into the era of um, Auntie Vicky E. E. Rodriguez and she wrote, brought this song out for the, the great Sonny Chillingworth when he recorded his first album and this is a song written by Auntie Vicky's um, uh, great great grandfather. Uh, James Papa Ee of the area in Kapilani Park uh, called Maki Island. And in on the old days, before the Alawai Canal was built, this Alawaiki Key was taro patches, duck ponds, rice paddies, so it was a lot of water, a lot of swamp land, and wetlands, all wetlands, and you had to get around by boat. And so right where, where the Kapilani Park bandstand is was is a uh, Maki Ilana and James Ke Captain James Marquis was a very prominent seaman and businessman uh, in Hawaii. He started off the Ulupalakua Ranch in Maui. And also he had many sugar plantations. And he became a board of directors over here at the Kapilani Park uh, Board. It's a, still a publicly run park, a board of trustees that run the park, and but maintained by the city and county of Honolulu. There's that famous song of sometimes two, sometimes three lovers going to this island. It was a favorite place to gather, and then also leave it up to your imagination. What is a rocking chair doing in this, in a song? How about if you and I get in that rocking chair? That's a proposition being asked. <laughs> well, let's get down and let's rock and we'll find out. <laughs>
Rocky Island. Okay. Oh, that was a beautiful song of the days of past. And Sonny and Gabby used to get together a lot. They were the best of friends over here, brother. Gabby Pahinui, the Sonny and Ata Isaacs was his right hand man. Uh, Sonny was also another on the left hand side always. And um, they could, when you hang around them, they were big influences in my life. You hang around them, you really learn how to be, drink vodka. <laughs> like it's going out of style. <laughs> it's amazing how much, you know, they had. They knew how to have a good, good time for days on end. Can you imagine the gossip, the chatter of birds? Uh, he could, he, the gossip was going all the way from Pune up to Waipio, you know, then. But in the end, all's well that ended well. So here's that famous love song uh, that was made very popular now by Gabby. And we got to play with um, Gabby's sons, Martin, who Aaron and I played with for Oh, over 20 years, and, and Greg played with Cyril Pahinui, the number nine son. Martin was the number 10. And so here's their legacy that we like to carry on with this famous song. A lot of people recognize it. They always want to request it when they see Cyril or Martin. He love it. The Twin Waterfalls, Waipio Valley.
Thank you very much. You know, and uh, uh, also another close friend of ours was a uh, uh, inductee into the Hall of Fame, uh, Dennis Kamakahi. I got to play with Dennis for many years with the Sons of Hawaii from 1986 all the way up to the end when Joe Marshall passed away. And of course, the leader, Eddie Kamai, was also inducted to the Hall of Fame, and he liked to um, bring back many of the old songs. Uh, but, you know, Dennis was a classmate of Aaron's also, the class of 1971 Kamehameha schools. Anybody else from Kamehameha alumni? They're, they're everywhere usually too. Not, not today. <laughs> oh, okay. So, Aaron, you're alone. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. For once. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, Aaron, you want to do one of these songs? Or? No, you can go ahead. Okay. Okay, we'll do a very popular song that Dennis wrote he would come up to Aaron's bedroom and Aaron lived in Kalihi and Hala Drive and that's at the bottom of the hill of Kamehameha schools at the top of the hill and Dennis would come early in the morning and serenade Aaron with his ukulele <laughs> outside Aaron's bedroom window <laughs> that's my alarm goes. clock at 5 30. <laughs> that's my 5 30 and Dennis clock. was all spit and polish in his ROTC uniform and, and I just took it I, I still had to press my pants and my shirt and polish my brass and polish my shoes <laughs> <laughs> so, and so this uh, he had a he had an adoration of this uh, beautiful fair skinned woman but he kept it very secret in typical uh, Hawaiian fashion a very traditional Dennis combined the traditional Hawaiian poetry and the style of music along with the modern uh, renaissance uh, Hawaiian renaissance and the uh, uh, folk art of uh, the American folk rock music. He loved his rock and roll country music. So he wrote this song and he, he would always explain it as the, uh, this song being um, the fair skinned woman of Molokai and all the Hapahole girls on Molokai, like uh, Scarlet Riddy. She thought, oh, Dennis wrote that song for us, huh? I said, no, 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 he wrote it for someone else, but uh, sorry, sad. <laughs> but he would explain it as the the beauty of Mount Kamako shrouded in the white mist, and that's the fair-skinned woman. And when that white mist lifts up, that fair-skinned woman reveals her beauty, because you have those waterfalls that come, and uh, so that are, so that's what this song, uh, Wahini Ilakea, where they pay tribute to his ancestors as well, of Halava and Hono Levi. It, this, pop, this song became so popular to, to today, it's danced all around the world by all the, uh, many hula dancers you know internationally so it's amazing how beautiful this song was even Dennis is not here with us you know his, his uh, friendship his aloha and his beautiful music still lives in all of us Wahine Ilikea
good friend Dennis Kamaka his composition Mohini Lake here. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, we come to the end of our show today and our very special concert. I'd like to especially thank our sound man Dickie over there, longtime friend Olamana. from the drinking days of Olamana, way back Olamana Hotel and all those other old places, Mam's Ranch House, Territorial Tavern. Prohibition, he meant. <laughs> <laughs> and also a big hand for Blaine Kiot organizing this wonderful series of concerts. Oh, Brother Blaine, Mahal and Nui Loa. Oh. So here's a song that was inducted into the Hawaiian Music Hall of Fame as well. We, we uh, inducted uh, not just composers and hula masters and hula ch and uh, notable people that influenced Hawaiian music, but also songs as well. So this famous song of Lorenzo Lyons, Reverend Lorenzo Lyons in Waimea Church. Hawaii Aloha. I leave you with this Kihu Alo tune called the Weeha Swing. You guys don't forget here this uh, old style slack key, but it's it was old but new. And it was put together by Baba Lou, Harry Hemmer, and then recorded by our good pal Sonny Chillingworth. And then we all, when Sonny and I used to do this song at the Hilo Slack Key Guitar Festival, we see another great Hawaiian Slack Key Guitar Master, Uncle Fred Punahoa, in the audience. And of course, Uncle Fred was, is a grand uncle of um, Ledward Kaapana. A lot of you guys know Ledward today, and his, uh, he's taken a Hawaiian Slack Key Guitar around the world, and Uncle Fred style, you know, making it very notable that music of Kaapana and the Hawaiian Slack Key Guitar of that area. And so, we pay tribute to him and do like a punahoa special, punahoa swing over there inside the middle of this weeha swing. So everybody having a good time over there? We say weeha! Yeah.